So we will move on to the fourth presenter, because uh, Matt is still not here. Um, Jody Garnett uh, will talk to us about the journey. He's a technical director at uh, Geocat, wears many hats, as you can see. Um, the floor is yours. Thank you. Well, welcome everyone. I'm glad to see so many people uh, braved daylight after that icebreaker. Uh, I'm glad you could join us. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about our phosphor G journey uh, at GeoCAT. So GeoCAT is a, uh, a uh, service provider based out of the Netherlands. Uh, it's a, a small company uh, based in this wonderful village. Um, we are a passionate member of the OSGO community. I've got this lovely shirt of, about putting our heart into everything we do. Um, and a lot of what we do is open source. And so we really like to take the chance to uh, financially support the OSGO community and the o open source projects. Um, you notice we're a platform sponsor at this activity. And uh, it's really impressive that such a small company is so generous. Um, um, so GeoCat, uh, one of the reasons we're so generous is our livelihood, our business, is built uh, in collaboration with a lot of these wonderful open source projects. Uh, our GeoNetwork enterprise is uh, part and parcel with the GeoNetwork community. Uh, we've got a, a nice project called Bridge, which helps um, desktop users take advantage of all the uh, lovely open source projects, map server, geo server, and so forth. Um, what I'd like to talk to you about in this presentation is how we've, um, as a community, have established open uh, in our GIS industry. Um, we're here at a conference hosted by OSGO, but OSGO did not get to this point alone. So I'd like to do a little bit of a tour of how we got here. And then I would also like to talk about an opportunity about where we, as a community, are going to go next. So um, as with everything, uh, community is a grassroots effort. In this case, literally the grass project. So the uh, Open Grass Foundation um, started in 1992, and one of the first things it did coming out of the Grass Open Source Project was start to look at interoperability. Um, and you can see that all of these organizations have uh, picked up that challenge, uh, the OGC, OSGO, uh, OpenStreetMap, and so forth. So the, um, the original motivation, the original inspiration was provided by a fellow called uh, Ken Gardalis uh, in a grass uh, newsletter uh, that was published. And he started to outline how we as an industry could start to share data between our applications. Um, one thing that's really nice at these conferences, people get together and explore ideas, and then we change the world. So at a grass user meeting, um, uh, the open grass put on by the Open Grass Foundation, was the initial uh, group that went on to um, create and, uh, and form the Open Geospatial Consortium. So this group put together all of those ideas about having common interfaces so we could share data between our software uh, and started to standardize them. Okay. And just to kind of put a, a little bit of a tour of all of the work that's been done by the OGC and with this community, um, you can see that we've uh, steadily introduced a whole bunch of standards in the late 90s and early 2000s. Um, and each time a standard is uh, produced, it kind of opens up a market, it opens up an opportunity, and it's uh, been a chance for open source to come in and provide a, an implementation. So we can see that the OGC has defined this concept of simple features, and then in 2001, we get an open source project to fill in that niche with PostGIS. Uh, we create the concept of a web map service, and projects like Map Server and GeoServer and QGIS Server come in and help fill this niche. Um, it doesn't have to just be uh, implementations, concepts 
are shared, and they're important too. So the concepts defined by the OGC formed some of the foundations of like the GeoTools library that I work on. Um, and because this is a GeoCAP presentation, we can also see where GeoNetwork is formed, um, and also the Ply CO, uh, CSW project. Um, it's also interesting for the free and open source software that there can be gaps in the system. So the GRASS project was originally um, done by the US Army, and the US Army kind of put that project on hold and uh, only provided like a series of updates before a group of academia picked it up and took over the project in 1997. This is a really strong message that open sources allows technology to, to change uh, who the custodian is. It makes it a far safer investment in technology than going with any single vendor or organization. Um, also, projects don't have to start open source uh, the much beloved map server actually started as a closed source project and was released in open, as an open source project in 1999. Um, one of the things that came out of a collaboration between the map server com user group and the grass um, community was actually the OSGO Foundation. So this is many of the individual software projects ganging up and forming a software foundation to help promote the way uh, in which we enjoy, um, enjoy open source. So you also can see a little bit of a gap. So the OSGO likes to make sure that our software is both open source, but is also conducted in a fair and open manner. And we've got an incubation process. And so you can see when these projects have applied, when, how they've worked on their governance, and then when they've graduated as, as a full um, open source pro or OSGO project as part of our foundation. Okay, um, so just in terms of uh, establishing Phosphor-G, the very Phosphor-G, first Phosphor-G was actually um, in 2002 as part of the GRASS uh, Users Conference. In 2003, there was a map server uh, user meeting, and the first conference to actually have the title of Phosphor-G was in 2004 um, in Bangkok. And these events predate the, open, the, OS, the um, OSGO Foundation. So this conference is actually bigger than just OSGO. You can find many groups holding Phosphor-G conferences around the world. Um, for this event, uh, it's, we've got a strong history of conferences that move around the world, uh, Lausanne in Switzerland, Victoria in Canada, which I helped organize, Cape Town and Sydney, Australia, uh, Barcelona, Spain, Denver, Nottingham, Portland, uh, Seoul, Bonn, um, Boston, and Dar es Salaam last year. And finally, we have everyone here today. In addition to these international conferences, we also have a lot of the regional uh, groups putting on Phosphor-G events. So um, this outreach effort is another kind of um, component that helps uh, bring open to our GIS. Okay. Um, so I'd like to switch gears. This is a bit of history about how we got here. Um, it's important to note that a lot of the standards helped uh, create a space for our open source projects to thrive. And I'd like to talk a bit about what's happening in our industry uh, right now. So our OGC standards have been successful, but they've been a little bit isolated from the rest of IT. Um, the rest of the IT has enjoyed far greater uptake of open source uh, technologies, and we would like to see the same level of success. Um, there is a group, uh, W3C um, and OGC, that collaborated on a, on a white paper called Spatial Data on the Web. And this was done back, I think, in like 2016 or 2017. And we're only starting to see the effects of that now. And I want to bring it to your attention because um, this opportunity is happening now. So the idea here is that this was a course correction. We actually had an earlier attempt to go from these XML technologies that are occasionally unfashionable. Um, uh, and 
the data that we publish is not accessible to the rest of the web, which expects URIs and links and a little bit more context. So there was a proposal done by ESRI, the ESRI uh, Geoservices REST API, back in 2010. And members of this community, OSGEO, OGC, and other groups, um, rejected this proposal for a wide number of reasons. But if we go on the OSGEO website, we can see a long list of signatures for people who did not want to see this particular technology ad uh, adapted. Uh, there were certainly were issues uh, with it in terms of its uh, how it was defined and so on. The other kind of course correction I'd like to talk about is there was a geo package um, standard defined in 2016 which showed how the OGC could start to work um, in GitHub and using open source workflows which we've pioneered in our community. So rather than using like PDFs and Word and track changes, they're starting to use GitHub and pull requests and if you haven't seen this new approach, uh, it's, uh, really, uh, it's really about time. Um, in 2017, we saw that collaboration with OGC and W3C joint effort. Um, and another thing that uh, was published at that time was the OGC Open Geospatial API. Who here has heard of the OGC API? A couple people. I'm really happy to see that because it's going to be affecting our lives and our projects in the, in the coming year. An early um, attempt to apply these ideas was the Spatial Temporal Asset Catalog, really pioneered by a lot of the uh, organizations working with satellite data. I know a number of projects that took part in the WFS3, um, and all of these ones are using open API, um, kind of mach uh, machine description of the REST services, um, and JSON and HTML. Um, and then in 2019, this is that activity that's happening right now, and many of the projects are taking part in it, um, is starting to package up all the traditional um, vector and raster and tiling services using this REST API and JSON and HTML. One thing that's really exciting is all of this is happening at the same time. So uh, at the end of this activity, we're going to be presenting a new benchmark of what's expected from our open source projects. So this is certainly a new opportunity for open. Um, so I'm going to show a couple examples. Who here is from the Pi Geo API project? Anyone? Um, so Pi Geo API is the newest member of our uh, OSGEO community, and it is an initial implementation um, of the OGC API. And another project uh, which I help out with, Andrea Amy has been pioneering an OGC API extension for GeoServer. So I'm just going to use these ones to demonstrate the approach. So the big one here is this is offering a developer-friendly REST API. It's built uh, on the success of Swagger. It's the open API standard. And it's sufficient detail to generate clients in JavaScript and Java um, from this XML description. It's also developer friendly. So you can go through this without like reading 100 pages of specification. And it's machine friendly, so we can generate clients and servers. Um, here's the exact same kind of REST API being documented by GeoServer. The other thing is it's offering browser-friendly HTML. So we can actually go through the feature content and explore and have a look at what data is being published. Um, this is accessible to casual use, but it's also accessible to search engines. So information we're publishing can be found and accessed by uh, the public. Um, it also offers developer-friendly JSON, because uh, nobody really likes playing with XML. Um, and it's also providing machine-friendly JSON, so we can document the, the, uh, the um, names in our dictionary and provide some context. Uh, so this can help in, um, the example here is uh, using, using definition it's provided by schema.org. This is also allows the data to be 
accessed by Inspire, and so on. Okay, so that's the key thing, uh, that this is really a new challenge, a new opportunity uh, for our open source projects. Most, uh, the open source projects really should be paying attention to this, having plans. Uh, we would really like to see this picked up. I also wanted to talk a little bit about Bridge. This is a, a project that, um, that GeoCAD is well known for. And uh, this allows um, people to take advantage of a lot of the open source that we are making available in our community. So GeoCAD 3 uh, helped folks that were using ArcGIS um, uh, ArcMap in order to publish to GeoServer and PostGIS and MapServer. Um, and this week at this conference, we're actually announcing GeoCAT Bridge 4. So this is a plugin for QGIS, um, offering that, uh, that similar experience for our QGIS community. <clears throat> uh, the part I'm excited is we are also um, making this available as an open source project. So QGIS plugin is gonna be a commercial GPL source code is available. Um, we're also defining a uh, Python library, Bridge Commons, uh, making publishing of the geospatial uh, data available to Python. And then um, <laughs> Bridge Style, uh, which allows us to uh, do the styling cartography um, transformations, and that also offers a command line um, to convert between the different formats. Uh, this is uh, uh, started in part with a collaboration with the GeoStyler project. Okay, so in, for bridge desktop users, we really would like to offer a great publishing workflow, take advantage of all the um, open technologies, and help you take your cartography with you. For developers, we are looking for collaboration um, and are providing Python libraries for automation. I'm certainly going too quickly here. So for our journey, um, uh, we would like to invite you, so to, to remind everyone that open starts with you. Share what you learn. OSGO membership is free. Please contact and join your local uh, OSGO chapter. And for the projects here, uh, open API is an opportunity. Uh, have a plan for open API, take part, help, uh, shape the future. Uh, so join us and help make geospatial open. So thank you. <laughs>